Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, and I am joined today by a good friend of mine, Dorinda Barker, and I've known her for a while. If, if uh, you're fans of mine through the AfterBuzz days, her and I have done a plethora of shows. Um, yeah. We did, we, we did um, Revenge, right? Yes, yes. We've done Bar Rescue, and I, I'm pretty sure we've done Shameless as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what are, am I missing others? Like, I, I know that's like the big ones, but am I missing any? Yeah, da- I mean, Dallas, but you really weren't part of Dallas, right? I was not. I'm not a, I'm not a Dallas watcher. Yeah, but that was AJ. AJ Gibson was on that one, and Kelly Oliski. That was a good group. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, I think there was a couple others I did that I don't even remember that I did. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, and for those of you just joining, um, you, you hopefully know by this point, I like to bring on my friends and share their journeys. Uh, of course, they're not here simply because they're my friends. They have uh, quite a, a resume to be able to talk about. And so we're going to talk about a couple, various couple of things. Um, and yeah, so like, you know, I just remember the early days. Um, I believe you came through Cat Bayless, right? Like you, you, if nothing else, yeah. you have a plethora of like creative friends around you. Is that fair to say? Yes, that is very fair to say. So Cat Bayless. Uh, Ashanti Moselle, uh, yeah, a lot of creative friends, yes. But I got there through Cat, yes. Yes, and for those on for the Cat Bayless, um, uh, hit the floor, um, among other things. But I think like that's the one most recently like people would recognize her through. Yeah, very she's great. Actually doing, uh, she just flew to Utah. She's in Utah right now doing a film for Viacom. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting, you know, um, I mean, we've done a number of stuff, but this is like the first time where we're really going to like sit down and talk about like the past and what got us. So like, you know, I'm always curious, like what, what made you move to Hollywood? <laughs> you know, the age old question. <laughs> the age old question. Well, it's actually funny because it's exactly how Kat and I met. We were in uh, the Stellar, not Stellar Adler. I did do Stella Adler, though, before I met Kat. I did Stella Adler. I was acting, actually. And then we did the Esper Studio, and, which was the Meisner technique and everything. So I had grown up in New York City all my life, like between New York City and Kentucky, which was an interesting, you know, gel of things. And I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to move. So I decided, well, if I'm acting, why not LA? So I came out here and I've been here 18 years now. Wow. So it's my home and I love it. I love it. I mean, acting, I mean, have I even done any, I haven't done any acting in a few years, but producing, I've done that and what I'm into right now. So, but yeah, I came out here because of acting which was great. And then Kat moved out like a month or two later. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, so when did you feel like an LA resident? Cause like for me, I think it was like seven years where like I used to consider myself like a permanent resident. And then I was yeah. like, all right, I live here now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was probably like five years. It was interesting. So for the first five years, you meet all these people that don't live here. Mm-hmm. And then at five years, for some reason, you start meeting everybody who lives here. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like the energy shift. And they're like, okay, you live here now. But it's, yeah, about five years. And then at 10 years, you become like an Angelino. You get the keys to the city. Because after 10 years, you're pretty much not leaving here. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, it was about five years. It was about that time. Five to seven years. It takes a minute. But it was, I mean, I love it. Very interesting. And, you know, I'm always curious, like, you know, that, that, that's a, that's a good amount of time and you seem very positive. Like, I, and I'm trying to figure out the right way to say this because like, obviously there's one of two ways things can go. And, uh, you know, you can either kind of be here and your spirit gets broken or you can kind of maintain. And I've always seen you as someone who, who does maintain, who has a positive attitude about things. And even now, like, I mean, especially in this pandemic, like we could be having, the, like, unless you're putting on some sort of face just for this yeah. part of it, it seems like you, you know, you always find the light in things. Yeah. And, you know, the pandemic's been hard for everybody. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's moments where I'm just like crying in the corner. 
<laughs> which is okay and it's normal. I think I would be really thinking there's something wrong with me if I was pretending everything was great. But there's also, a, and we had spoke before the start, I, I, we're going to get through this, number one. And because I had to, I was normally always around people because I'm used to being around people because I come from a big family, everything like that. I was actually forced to be by myself. And it was nice, to be honest with you, because I started to learn a lot more about myself and become more centered, where I don't know if a lot of people would say that would happen to them during a pandemic and a quarantine, but it was something that I was like, I can either sit here and be depressed and be negative about the whole situation, or I can sit here and really like dig in to things I love about myself, things I I'm like, okay, maybe that could, we can, you know, regulate certain things, but, or modify them. But in the whole jam, I mean, I think it's been pretty good to be, I know it sounds weird to say it's good during a pandemic, but I've learned a lot about myself during this time. What's been like the biggest takeaway? Yeah. Or it could be a few, if you, if. if yeah, there's a, a few. So what I learned uh, first and foremost is, you have to you have to believe in yourself so you know i i have a company and we can go into that in a little bit but it gave me this newfound belief in myself and the doubt that i had to kind of get over for you know and i'm not going to say that i don't have doubt i still do but i mean it's not like it was before i'm more headstrong i'm like i can do this if i can make it through this thing i can do anything I can make it through this pandemic and come out on the other side, you know, decent. I, I can do anything. So, I mean, that I thought was great. I also found a, a voice for myself um, because, you know, things, do, you know, especially in the beginning, things went a little crazy because I was flying on March 12th. I think, oh, no, March 13th, March 13th. I was flying and out of Dallas. And once I was like, this is not good. I once I was flying out and <laughs> just the whole you could just feel everything and I was like okay well then you gotta hunker down and be prepared yeah so would you uh, so you mentioned you know you're doing a lot more producing in that sense for for film uh, I'm always very intrigued because like I feel like people you know, most lay people don't quite understand what is a producer. And then secondly, like what it even takes to do that, because like when it, w the way you're describing that mentality is completely apropos to film producing. Cause it's like, there's 800 fires, sometimes <laughs> literally more so figuratively, yeah. but it's like, right. You can't lose your head. Cause if you're going to get upset at every little oh. problem that comes along, you're never going to make a movie. Right. No, you're never, it's never going to happen. And so it, I think, honestly, now that you brought that up, I think that probably also helped a lot getting through this. Mm -hmm. Because producing, you're always putting out fires. There's always something happening. There's always something going on. And you're like, okay, and you got to figure out, you have to figure out in your brain, instead of a yes, no answer, you have to find the in between. Because, you know, LA is filled with lots of personalities <laughs> yeah. and especially actors or what's going on on set or what's going on. Um, yeah. What's going on on set or in the office and you have to be able to maneuver around the people and be able to see the middle ground for everybody. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, plus I come once again, four, I, I'm one of five girls and you have to figure that all out too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, have you ever gotten producer's brain? And what I mean by that is um, sometimes you're just so focused on like this larger problem that then someone comes up to you and they're like, you want blue or red? And you're like, yeah. And you just keep walking. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. I did a photo shoot. I did a photo shoot uh, about a month ago. Yeah, it's about a month ago now for Next Connection for my company. And so I did produce it and everything. And they were asking me, so I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I was like, and they're like, I asked you what you wanted for lunch. <laughs> I said, I, did you want the sandwich or the salad? And you're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Let's um, do the next shot. 
that's always it, it, it that part of it is very interesting to me and i know like you know it's it, someone there obviously like someone in that position who's then like wait so now what do i do it's very easy to complain and to to a large extent rightfully so but it is interesting to me how like i don't know i've become a lot more empathetic for when people have that response is like oh you're really working on something aren't you yeah <laughs> there's something else going on over here <laughs> this is it important yeah, do you sure. ever get any, here's a question for you do you ever get like if you're you know just even in real life when somebody is like in this we'll go with producers brain because mm -hmm. you're looking at a bigger picture even in life and so they'll talk to you about something so minuscule and you're like huh yeah. what <laughs> just like, and then i was like oh okay 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 um and then i'll get into it but like sometimes i'm like wait that's not such a big deal but then you have to remember that's a big deal for them yeah i mean certainly like and i think as we're talking about it more, I think there is this intersection of like being a good producer and then like being in a good relationship. And we can start to kind of move into that. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of set it up and give it context as well. But, but yeah. yeah, in that sense, it is, it is very interesting to me of, because I find myself a lot of times, I'm always going for the solution and I want to be like empathetic and so forth. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes uh, when people come to me, it's like, okay, you're coming to me because you have a problem and you need a solution. And I'm getting to a place now of like, okay, I got to recognize sometimes there's just people, people just need to get something out of themselves mm -hmm. and then move on. And so like now I, I try to like preface it of like, are you looking for a solution or you just need me to listen to you? And I, I you know, and then sense like if they want me to just listen, I'll give them that full attention. But you know, that at least I can be in that right headspace of like, okay, you just need me to listen. That's brilliant. I need to start using that, Phil. <laughs> well, Thank it got, you. It got to a point where literally like everyone was like, you know, it was, it was I think inherently most people were like, I really just want to listen. So, so like, you know, I, I can't give it, I'll, I'll say like 80% really just want the vent. So like, all right, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta shut up here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I've actually said that before, like if a friend called and they're like, in it, I'm like, okay. I'm just going to shut up now. I'm not going to say a word. And they're like, okay, okay, good. Yeah, exactly. So I guess, you know, since I've made that connection, let's, let's talk about uh, Next Connection. That's your, okay. that's the company of yours. Um, and to, and by the way, you can kind of expand on this. I'll give, I'll give the, uh, the pitch version of this. It's, okay. as I, it's, as I understand it, it's to help people how to, properly or better date online because through your own experiences and through the experiences of various friends of yours it just yeah. wasn't working in the proper way and one of the things that's interesting to me about like the core of your mission is that like one of the things that wasn't working is just people were putting up this this um mirror of fakeness or whatever you want to call it yeah they just and, yeah. It, and it seems like what you found is the more authentic the person is that's putting themselves out the more authentic of a connection they'll get in response. Is that fair to say? That is, yeah, that is what I was also finding is what people thought was attractive, like of them wasn't. And so they were putting up pictures and I'm like, why would you put that up of yourself? And they're like, what do you mean? It's a great picture. And I was like, no, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And so it all really started from my guy friends, my guy friends, and they're like, I'm not getting good matches. I'm not getting this. And I said, well, let me see your profile. And it was the gym selfie, the, the uh, sweatshirt undone with the bare chest or like them and 500 other different people and sunglasses. And I was like, well, this is why you're not meeting anybody. This is why you're not meeting anybody. And then I fixed it. And it was them. It, I didn't change anything. It was just better representation of themselves. And I feel like sometimes peop, what people think what people think are good for them is not always so good for them. And they need someone on the outside looking out for them. Be like, no, no, no. We can we we can do better. And so that's what I'm there. I would go, no, we can do better. I can help you with this. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and how does like that, that sort of deeper connection, I mean, may, maybe people are, like, 
I don't know, say this, right? So like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of an online dating skeptic or just like a skeptic in general. So like in time. that sense, I don't know, like what would you say to convince someone like myself of like, you know, give it a shot. And cause there's, cause if, if I had any sort of big thing against it, it's like, I don't mm -hmm. want to pick someone that, that I, you know, would be in a relationship with. Cause I don't want just like sex is sex and sex is great. Don't get me wrong, but I'm yeah. not looking for that. I'm looking for an actual connection and to yeah. that for me, just value it purely on physical looks. It's like, that doesn't seem like a good start of relationship. Now, again, so, I yeah. can, so convince me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is perfect. Well, the, well, this is one of the great things that came out of the pandemic. They're finding that more and more people are having more of a connection now. Mm -hmm. So, but what it is, is your bio too. Women are, and this is a good thing for you guys, where women are more apt to look at your bio and read and ask questions about that. And honestly, some of uh, this one guy I was dating who was a great, great gentleman, lovely, lovely man. Um, but I loved the reason I got in touch with him and then we matched on each other was because of his bio, first and foremost. And it gave me a lot of things to talk to him about, which then spawned so many other things for us to talk about. So we found, I, we found like a mutual connection. I think it was about his dog. One of the, there was a couple of them, but I remember the one about the dog. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I really, my pet peeve, my biggest pet peeve is my dog's name. But it, it sounded like his dog's name was Peeve. And I thought that was hysterical. And I was like, so your dog's name is Peeve? He goes, no, my dog's name is a pet peeve. And I was like, well, what's your dog's name? Now, this guy's like six four, like a manly dude. And he goes, princess. <laughs> I was like, I get it. <laughs> so, I mean, but it gives you like things to talk about. I mean, you can find, and there's substance in it. And then even in, that's the thing with guys. I tell guys, read female bios because they'll tell you so much. And be fun about it. You don't have to be like, I'm going to get married tomorrow. I want to get married tomorrow. We got to have kids in a month. Uh, just be fun about it. But the bio to me is number one because it gives you so much. So being a skeptic as you are, because I gave you a long answer, but I don't know if I gave you the answer, is there's it's communication. And that's the one great thing about online dating, especially now, is communication. You can text with people you can even now in the apps they have it where you can video chat with them or even just call them so you don't even have to really exchange phone numbers yeah now in case you don't want to but it's it's communication and i think we were lacking that before this all happened to be honest with you even meeting people in real life everything was so quick 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 that when the world kind of stopped, we had to actually listen and talk to people and actually get to know them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it's interesting. I want to get your perspective because um, I have a friend who uh, uh, you don't know him, and I, but I wish you did. I want one day I'll, I'll introduce you. Um, <laughs> but he's a very interesting character, and so you know he he calls me. You know uh, he's kind of like my like um like my protege in some sense but oh, okay he's uh he does a lot of online dating and he finds himself in very similar patterns and what's interesting to me is um there was a point he was getting a little aggravated that you know the girl let's say didn't want to do a video call and i kind of took uh -huh. a step back my assessment of it was well okay listen maybe like she's busy a um, B, maybe she doesn't want to get dolled up for a video call, you know, right now, yeah. you know, like you, especially cause you know, this is all pandemic context. So it's like, maybe yeah. have a little bit. And then I remember one of the bigger things he said, to me, um, it was her birthday. And so he like texted her happy birthday. And then he's like, Hey, can we, uh, can we hop on the phone? I want to wish you a happy birthday. And she said, uh, no, I'm, I'm hanging out with my friends. And he was just so upset by that. And I'm like, let go of your ego, dude. Like it's yeah. her birthday and you're making it about you. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the whole thing with the phone call is like, if, if he wanted to do the phone call right then and there, like us girls, we need time. 
we, yeah. we want to look our best. We, what if she's like sitting there watching The Real Housewives with her head in like a big old like top knot? She's not going to want to have, she's not going to want to take 15 to 20 minutes to like doll herself up. Calling on the phone is a good thing, especially the first time. And if you want to do a video call after that, you can set it up. But yeah, he should have just, if she was okay with the phone call, he shouldn't have been upset. <laughs> I don't understand. He got to the phone call. <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, I guess in that sense, like, what are the expectations? You, like, not, maybe not expectations, but like, and I don't want, I don't want to be so like pragmatic about it, of like, give me the, uh, give me the full system of how one should go about it. But you know what I mean? Like just in yeah, that yeah, context yeah. of like, give me the right approach. Cause certainly then like, I mean, not that I want to talk about like getting to the mentality of like, why are guys sending like dick pics? It's like, okay, what? Go. I just, that I never guess. works. Never uh, works. Uh, like it is unbelievable to me. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. Unbelievable to me that men think, oh, my God, she likes me. Dick pic. Like, <laughs> she's right, right. That automatically means that. No, no. Most parts, we don't want to see your junk. Like, we, we just don't and unless we want to be intimate with you. And we need to get to know you in that sense. I mean, honestly, and... If you want to meet a quality woman, unless a man's really not looking to meet a quality woman, but if you're swap, swiping on quality women and then sending them pictures like that, you're in the wrong on so many levels. But once again, even if you're swiping on a woman who isn't like that, no one gave you permission for that. No, no woman gave you permission unless she did, and then that's a different story. But I don't understand that brazenness that men feel or the ask, or the ask for, you know, the pictures of your boobs or whatever. I, I don't understand. Well, just because this is a dating app doesn't mean that you don't have to act correctly. Because in the real world, if you want to meet someone of substance, you have to act correctly. That's why I like Bumble a little bit better than some of these other ones in Hinge. But yeah. And, and so like, what is, I, I, I don't know, like, I imagine like for me, I would be, I would almost in a sense feel like I'm too, being too cautious because I wouldn't want to step over boundaries. So like, what is the fine line of like, you know, even just asking like, hey, do you want to do a video call? Like what, what, how do you gauge that feeling from her? You know what I mean? Well, you know, so I will tell you in, in my experience, because not only am I the, a president, I'm also a client. And so my thing is, is that, excuse me, I see where the, where the conversation's going. And if we've been talking for at least 24 to 72 hours, like messaging back and forth, and the messaging is really vibing, I would say, hey, is it okay if we uh, jump on a call together? And it doesn't have to be a video call. It could. You can ask a video call. Would you prefer a video call or just a telephone call? You can ask it that way. But... It, you just know how the vibe is. But if you go more than, honestly, if you go more than 72 hours still texting on the app, messaging on the app, I, and you don't ask, you're now going into a new, unless the, you're going into a new place where it's just probably not going to work, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But I mean, if you're vibing and you'll know, I mean, you're, you're a smart guy and you've dated and so you know when it's the right time. And this is the same on dating apps. You'll know when it's the right time. Basically, it's, you know, you're chuckling when you're reading the text messages. You guys are going back and forth asking questions. Things start to get a little bit more deeper in the question you're asking. That's when the, it's the right time to be like, hey, you want to take this offline and uh, do a call? Is there, uh, this just popped into my head, is there a mm -hmm. book that you would recommend to help like take, for lack of a better term, a schlub and turn him into more of a gentleman. I'm writing that book, Phil. <laughs> When's it come out? I think a lot of, you know, I think a lot of us need it. It's true, it's so true. I did a, well, we both know Spicy, so her and I work together because she's a relationship coach and a matchmaker. Fantastic at what she does. And we did a, 
panel about two years ago, and it was crazy. No, how men, it, mostly men, but even women too, we need help. So I'm not going to put it all on the men. Women need help. Is that the men that were asking more questions about dating and how to be in this new age, because most women work, most women are making more money these days, they're becoming more independent. And so men don't know how to technically really act around women. Because they, well, is this wrong to ask this? Is it wrong to do this? And so it's, I, it's the thing of like, now you can still do those things. They just have to be worded differently, I think. And I also think it's because before, and I had this conversation the other day, and it was with a guy, and he was laughing because you're so true. Men, women didn't make as much money or didn't work at all, you know? And so any man probably would do that was interested in <laughs> now that we have our own power with money and everything like that, men really do have to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. So, but there is a thing, I mean, I don't think, and it's this, ge the generation before us, like our parents' generation, and then I blame my generation too, is that we're the first generation of women to actually work, like really work. So we, in a sense, also, have picked up a masculine energy of sorts that money has yeah. and we're like we don't need you we don't need you which is not true because at the end of the day when it comes to certain things they're never going to change because they're inherent in us as animals as species and a man needs to be needed and I, I had this conversation you know yeah the other day and a man needs to be needed and so women need to also, because we can do anything, you know, we can fix this, we can fix that, we can, you know, but we have to also be cognizant of letting our man be able to do that. If he wants to like fix a shelf, let him fix a shelf, you know, even though we can do it, it makes him feel good. Because a lot of women are like, I can't find a good man. Why can't you find a good man? Oh, you, you're doing everything and showing him that you don't need him to do anything for you. But I, it's a whole thing. I am writing a book because it is, we, men are amazing, amazing people, amazing. I love men. And so they're amazing, but it's just certain things I think people are just confused on. Women are confused on certain things too, but men are just as confused because they don't know what to do, especially in the era of also Me Too. We're in the era of Me Too. And which is great, great. We need it. We needed that to happen. But now certain men are like, can I say this? Can I not say this? Well, first of all, if you're asking if you can say this, you probably shouldn't have said it before. But there's other things like those middle ground things, which weren't awful. But now you're like, I don't know if I can say this. Yeah. And you're like, it, we're like I said, it, it's a new age, and I just think it's time for. <clears throat> us to start looking at things and it's, it's time to learn too. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I you know, I mean, uh, as a man, I, I, I almost like do like the idea of women holding us accountable in a large, because I don't know, like, cause I think, I think the, to me, the standard does need to be raised. I mean, maybe this is just anecdotal, obviously, you know, I've done no research as far as this, but I, yeah. I have, uh, friends that are, that are women that have called me and they're like venting about, like that they're engaging with a guy and, you know, they'll ask him of like, you know, so, Hey, what are your hobbies? And the guy will respond. And then it's just a period and without like, yeah. a call. and it's like, dude, we're, we're trying to have a conversation here. Like all you have to do is be like, and what are your hobbies? Yeah. And that's the thing. And that's something, Oh, thank you so much. I was going to, uh, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to talk about it again uh, later on when I do a little like, video I do always on Thursday. When somebody asks you a question, it's a volley. Yeah. So she asks you a question because she wants to know something about you. Ask her something back. And I, I can tell you, I, I have this hard, fast rule. If we're talking, we match up and we start talking, right? I ask you a question, you answer back and it's a period and you don't ask me a question back. Okay. 
That's one. I do it again. That's two. I do it a third time, knowing pretty much what the third time is going to be, but I always give it three times a shot, chance. And they give back nothing. I will... I'll, I won't talk to them. And I think that also goes to show that you, they don't want to really get to know you. I think that's what it is, too. Because men who do want to get to know you will ask you questions, yeah. whether it's online or offline. I do also think that people don't know how to message back and forth, too. I think there's that. Yeah, I think, I mean, it is interesting to me in that sense, because, like, for, from my perspective, I'm the type of texter that like, it's just like, what time are we meeting up, when and where, but I like, you know, people try to engage me on these like philosophical conversations. I'm like, not over text, call me, no. we'll Zoom, we'll have a real discussion. But like, don't, yeah. ask me, don't ask me about my opinion on the economic situation of America and expect me to text you back an answer. So for me, there is like, I could see like that, like that would be my hurdle. You know what I mean? And so yeah. as someone who would want to engage beyond just like, okay, what are my hobbies? Well, it's soccer. It's walking my dogs. Or, you know what I mean? Like I do try yeah, to, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, again, I think it is, it does come down to that. If like you really want to know somebody, then yeah, I would initially knowing that this is the medium under which I have to operate then I yeah. would in that circumstance versus my yeah. friends who know like, yeah, call me because you have my number. Exactly. And it doesn't have to go on forever. That's the other, that's where, you know, it brings back to what we were just talking about. So, you, you know, I, some, some of my opening lines is um, start, uh, especially with guys, because you're either like Star Trek or you like Star Wars. Not a lot of times is it in the middle. And, um, so I'll be like, they'll bring up something sci-fi. I always look at it to see, you know, and I'm like Star Trek or Star Wars. And then I look to see what their answer is. And they'll be like, oh, Star Wars. And they'll, and I'll be like, why? And then they'll go into it and it becomes this thing. And it's very light. It's very airy. But that also, even though it's light and airy, it's going to show how willing that person is to give you information about themselves. Mm -hmm. And that question right there also will tell you what kind of person they are when I ask the why. Interesting. Why do you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, the answer is, uh, I mean, I could, I like both, but not enough to like call myself a diehard one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. I mean, I do that. I've done like where some, this guy that I just talked to online he put up a, something about Paula Abdul's uh, Opposites Attract. He's like, I'm looking for my MC Scat Cat. Oh, I want to be the MC Scat Cat. And so then I did the line uh, from Opposites Attract, and then he did a line back. And then it became, like, very funny with questions in between. Yeah, yeah. And it became fun. And I'm like, oh, well, oh, this is someone I would, might want to go, uh, that I would definitely like to go have a coffee with or lunch with. Yeah. Awesome. Um and how has like, I'm curious, like, how has the pandemic affected all of this? Because, you know, we've talked about like, there's like now this deep need to connect. It's like, you know, I'm, I, I imagine like most people like, okay, I'm at home by myself. It's like, I need somebody to talk to like anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. People now are getting to know each other so much more because, that whole you couldn't be in a room and physical with them so people were just talking and it was so nice so um that gentleman i was talking about before that very lovely man um him and i still talk and who knows what's going to happen with us but we talked for like a month before we got together but i'll tell you our date was amazing and we dated for a bit, but he, it was because we had to get to know each other. Yeah. Because you didn't have that the whole time. So I felt, that's how I felt with people. And then people were doing some fun things. I know uh, someone who did a wine tasting with one of their dates, like a virtual wine tasting, which was great. And people, of course, cooked with each other. Someone, I had a friend drone something to someone that they like 
and they were talking online and they drone something to them. So I mean, it was pretty cool. Like people were finding new ways to connect with people. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually, I think, I think in, in, in some sense, like that would be a barometer for me of how inventive can you get? Yeah. I think, you know, I, 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 of course the easy answer, and I think this speaks to a theme that we've been talking throughout is, yeah, you could just be like, well, I don't know how to date. There's nothing to do. No bars open. It's like, come up with something. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's like, you have to be creative. And that's the other thing. It taught people how to be creative because you can go, it's so easy. I mean, it wasn't easy to go to a bar. It's still kind of not easy to go to a bar. But before it was like, meet me at the bar. Let's drink. Well, inhibitions get down and then things start to happen. No, now you're like you and I were talking and now we have to figure something out. Yeah, you know? to me, I, I mean, to me, it, it, it almost like what it really speaks to is this added effort. It's like, do you really like the person enough to come up with something? Because again, yes. well, it was like, hey, let's grab a drink this Friday. Great. You know, like you put no thought into that. Yeah. Maybe put a little bit of thought into the place that you want to go to. Yeah. Uh, but nothing beyond that. Now it's like, okay, do, you know, if you really want this person, yeah, you, you're going to have to show a little romance. And oh yeah, and that was, and if anybody knew anything, women still love romance. We love romance <laughs> and new creative things on doing things. I had, uh, there was two ways of doing this and I had two people do the two ways. So they were having a virtual date. So, but they wanted to order dinner from the same place. And I had had, someone had asked me this question, does she pay or does, because now they're not, in the same room together. I said, well, he can still pay. And they're like, how is that? I said, there's two ways to do it. She can order, if this sounds weird, but we're, like I said, once again, in a whole different world, she can order and he can Venmo her. <laughs> or- I'm getting a Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Venmo, cash up, do it. Or, I mean, or they can do it where he can have it sent to her house. Cause I know some girls are like, well, I don't want him to have my address. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I can understand that. Totally get on that board. So then that's when the Venmo came in. And, but, you know, I've seen that too, where, you know, and then the, the meals would come around the same time and they would eat together and then they would talk and there would be conversation. And it, it was great and it worked out great. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's a good way to do it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it just comes down to people's level of creativity and, and ultimately really to me, it is about effort and, and all yeah. that. Um, I mean, lots of six feet away hikes and picnics and. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I just yeah. like, I mean, you know, nature's a great way to kind of, cause especially like too, uh, you know, I mean, it goes like Steve Jobs is very famous for having walking meetings. And so. Uh, and I think I, I was listening to like Malcolm Gladwell. There's, there's something about this idea when you're staring at each other face to face, there, there's something a little bit different versus both staring forward. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's a lot more eloquent than me. Yeah. And obviously he's done research about this topic. I only heard him talk about it. So it's like, yeah. you know, the thing of a thing of a thing, but it, it, it almost seems like there's that deeper connection because you're, you're listening to the words more rather than looking yeah. at, you know, um, cause I mean, there is a benefit to seeing someone's facial expressions, of course, but when you're yeah. actually listening to the words more, I, there's also a little bit of substance. I, I feel, I don't know. It could be well, you're what you're doing. Then you're concentrating on the listening instead of concentrating on staring at each other and concentrating on, wait, is there anything in my teeth? Is my makeup not done right? Well, I'm thinking about like what us girls think, think about my hair out of place. Like, is he looking at my boobs? Is he looking at my outfit? Is my outfit okay? It's like when you guys are just walking and you, he's not looking at you. I can understand that because then you're listening and you're not thinking about all those things. Yeah. How do you, guys and girls, like how do we get to that place? Because you mentioned like you're worried about your hair, you think like, get ready i think but how do how do we like pull back on that fear it's like at that point to me like once you're in it they either either they accept you for who you are or they don't and if you have to like put you know be worried about that stuff 
it, it, it's kind of productive and maybe maybe it's just par for the course yeah. like it takes three yeah. or four days for three or four dates in order to combat that to really feel okay with somebody <laughs> i don't know but like i would like to if, if it was up to me i would love to get rid of that trepidation well i think that trepidation is if you feel that way and you get those when i talk about it for me it's because i really like the person Mm -hmm. And so now I'm in this whole, oh my God, does it like me? Does it not like me? And to me, it's confidence too. You should know. And I mean, most, well, it's just when we're around someone we really like, we just want them to like us so much that we get those thoughts into our head. Yeah. So I think what it is, is we need to, and I do it, I, and I'm, I'm going to sound corny, but I do talk to myself in the mirror before I go out for stuff like that. So I'm like, you look good. You look great. Everything's going to be fine. You know how to talk. You know how to, you know, laugh. You know you're intelligent enough to have a good conversation with someone. You got this. I mean, I've done it and it's helped me, but it's also, I don't, I mean, that's helped me a little bit, but I would say 50% of the time. The other 50%, I'm like, oh my God, do I look good? But it's just because I really like the person. So it's a nervousness thing. And we, I guess we need to get over that nervousness. I need to work on, we need, yeah, I need to work on that. So what, the, what defines that, like, okay, you like that person? Because um, I forget where I was kind of reading it, but it's this idea that, like, we just have such, such a desire to, like, project something for that other person. It's like, wait a minute. And I, I think what I was reading was more centered for like women because I, um, mm -hmm. of like, wait a minute, just take a step back and be like, do I even like this person? You know? So it's like, yeah. and, and, and not from a selfish perspective either, but there is that idea of like, yeah, like, listen, you want to know them as much as they want. And, and if like, take a moment to be like, who am I like playing puppet for? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's a fine line. Exactly. Get it. it is such a fine line. So I went out with someone a few weeks ago and it turned into a date. And uh, it's someone we know, so I'm not going to say that person's name. Fair and enough. so great person. And I wasn't nervous at all because I didn't know that it was that. But then I got exactly what you were just saying. I was like, wait a second. I'm just going to sit back and listen to this person. I'm going to listen to them talk. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. And I guess because I didn't know going in that it was a date, but I think it probably would have been the same way. It was just so, such a different way. It was more at ease. Yeah. If, yeah, that makes, yeah, it was so much more at ease that it turned, that it was, I wasn't thinking about myself. So I guess what you're saying is putting it on the other person and I agree with that. If you put it on the other person, then your nerves for yourself kind of dissipate. Yeah, and I, I, I guess if I had to like, listen, in, in, in the full spiritual realm, if I had to go into it, like it's like just, just, just be present, right? Be, be an authentic yeah. you and also see them for what they are. And the yeah. more present you can be, you can accomplish both. Because I think, you know, if you do focus on them, you know, you're not focused on you, maybe that relaxes you, but, and, but at the same time you want to be, so like, I think just, just try to try to ease the nerves and stay present. And if you like them, great. And if they like you back because of who you are, great. If not, well, then unfortunately you have kind of your answer. And, you know, as much, <laughs> you know, as, much as that person may be great on paper, it's like if they don't, if they're not into you, then like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And that's the other thing you have to know, like you can have a great date. You can have a great few dates. And then all of a sudden there's a change, there's a shift and you don't know what the shift is. The shift could be in the other person or whatever it is, but don't get, just because you had three great dates doesn't mean that you're getting married. Yeah. There's still, you still have to keep it loose, keep it light, getting to know the person, all of those things. But if that person, that person would be so into you for the first three dates, and then going into the fourth date, he could cancel the fourth date. Who knows why he did it? Hopefully that person or her tells you why, but sometimes they don't. But that's on them and that's not on you. Yeah. And I try to t I tell that to people all the time. And if he's not into you, he's not into you. Or if she's not into you, she's not into you. It's, you never know what's going on in someone else's head. 
how do you, uh, you know, and, and how do you kind of account for or coach people for the idea of like, it wasn't a waste of time? Because I think like, whether it is, you know, just kind of dating around, or <laughs> I, I certainly look at it from like relationships, like I know people, you know, and I'm sure you do too, that, you know, they're together yeah. for two, three, maybe four or five years. And yeah. then all of a sudden they break up and they are just at each other's throats. And it's like, listen, like clearly you like that person. So it's like, yeah. you know, I get it. It didn't work out. But like, does that mean that you have to like hate each other for the rest of your eyes? Like that's not. Wow. No, I mean, well, there is that, that old adage. There's a fine line between love and hate. And technically, I think they're the same thing, same emotions, just on opposite ends of each other. But I have done a, a good job, and I don't know why, I, but this is the way I've always felt with people that I've broken up with. We'll start with the long term, and we'll go into the just, you know, one or two dates thing. So long term, I always go, when we break up, I think about it this way. There was something in the beginning about that person that I really liked that I wanted to spend this time with. And we were friends when we started out. And I, and I honestly go back to that time. And that's how I'm able to be okay. I mean, I get, I get it. When you're really in love with someone and it, it doesn't work out and you might be the one who is more in love with the other person, but always think about it. Do you truly, if they, you truly want that person out of your life, that's fine, but you don't have to be angry at them forever because you're taking something what did you take from that relationship what did you learn from that relationship what did you learn from that relationship that you're going to take with you and go i didn't like that i didn't like that so you know what i learned that i didn't like this particular thing so i'm not going to do this anymore i didn't like how i asked it so i'm going to grow from this or i not going to put up with somebody who leaves the dishes in the sink just you know something something like very you know minute but you'll be like okay i'm not going to do this i'm not going to put but i learned that this is something that i'm not going to put up with but the thing is is every relationship even the ones where it's like two three days two months four months you're learning something and if you go in with the attitude like that you will hate less yeah yeah. And I try to like, for me, I just, I, I, I try to look at it from like a gratitude perspective. Right. So even like, yeah. let's say a short date, like if, if some guy really went to the level of, or girl, right. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. ultimately, like they went to a, a little bit above and beyond to try to make a date fun. And you did yeah. have fun on that date. It's like, okay, well you got to have that experience. So just yeah. because you didn't end up with that person, why is, why does that negate the fun that you had? you know it, yeah and it shouldn't because it was an experience that you might not have ever had before yeah. and in that there's something in that experience that you were supposed to take from that and i always think that in everything in life you're you're, you're it, you learn every day of your life to the day you die hopefully. I, I, yeah hopefully hopefully if you're open you know, to it, if you're open if you're it. open you have to be open to it so you know so if we're coming from openness and we're both open people. So um, if more people were more open to that way of thinking, we would have less hate. Yeah. And, you know, and not hate, because if you go out with someone for three times and you hate them, that's on you. <laughs> that's truly on you. <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest. But take, okay, well, let me see what I did. Was there something in there that, you know, not you know, honing in on it and going crazy about it, but be like, what was it? Like was, you know, for me, I did this. Okay. I was fine. Even, you know what you can learn about short-term relationships that you were fine. And yeah. it was the other person. Honestly, you'll be like, Oh, I was fine. It was just them. Yeah. What do you say to um, like, and this could be a good final question. Like people think they have a type. And like, for example, I know this girl and um, I don't know, she just like loves the stereotypical bad boy. And yeah, every relationship <laughs> she's had, like she, you know, like it just ends up not being the thing. And I'm like, and I don't want to be so counter uh, opposite of, of that. But yeah. I'm like, listen, where you're at in life, you just need a nice dentist, a lawyer, a doctor that appreciates who you are. 
And, yeah. you know, listen, I don't know if I'm right. I could be completely wrong. But at the same time, she's never given herself the chance to do that. So not that like I'm saying like, am I right? Is she right? But like, is there, yeah. is there some sort of truth in the idea of like, if you, if you are noticing patterns about yourself, like maybe just try something different and reconsider your type. Well, I think you're absolutely right, Phil. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I think you're absolutely right. And I also think is she should look within herself. And this is an honest, honest, like a come to Jesus moment for herself, as we, you know, as Southerners call it, but of what inside me is attracted to a guy like that? What inside me do I not like about myself? that that guy that I'm attracted to is going to show me and highlight that for me and tell me, yep, you're right. You're right. Wh whatever it is you don't like about yourself or whatever that deep seated, you know, loathing for yourself is that cause that hurt people are reflections of you. So every friendships, relationship, any relationship could be friendship, could be romance, but a lot of times in romance, it is a, a reflection of how you feel about yourself. So if she's not ready to look at herself, I, a whole proponent of dating opposite of me to see what it is about me that I'm like, what's going on? Why do I keep getting the same dude? And seeing, okay, and see why I'm uncomfortable with that dating opposite. Is it, am I uncomfortable because I don't, it's a feeling that I'm not used to, you know? Some yeah. of us don't know what it's like to be treated nice by people to also, too. And we get into patterns. Yeah, no, that's, that, that, that is a harsh truth right there. A very sad truth. Uh, yeah. But, it can, but, the, but the good thing is it can be fixed. It's not like it's unfixable. You just have to want to fix it. And, and that, that's the conundrum with humans. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think it's no different than like, you know, you can look at the world of like, oh, the world's going to shit. And I say, okay, there's a lot of bad stuff. There's also a lot of good yeah. stuff. Like focus on the people that are doing what they can. And, you yeah. know, are they going to solve it? I don't know. But at least like I'd, I'd rather be around those people than, yeah. than not. And so I think it, it applies the same way. And, you know, it, at least it goes into a deeper discussion of like the myths we tell ourselves and whatever else yeah. that we then believe are true. But then it's, you know, there's no one out there for me. Really? There's no one out there for you? <laughs> Come on. There's someone for everyone. I truly, and I believe that there's someone for everyone. So because we live in such a big world that I do believe there's someone for everyone. But if, there, if it doesn't work out with that person, there's someone for you someone else for you too. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Well, any, uh, any final parting words of wisdom or anything uh, you want to kind of express that perhaps I haven't uh, nudged you towards? Uh, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. As I clear my throat. No worries. First of all, this was so much fun. I enjoyed it so much, <laughs> but I do want to add in one thing and it's something I've seen in, on, um, you know, I use Instagram a lot as my uh, business tool for next connection. And when I talk about online dating, I get a lot of, Oh, I'm afraid. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't re be afraid that no one's going to swipe on you. Don't be afraid that about your look. Don't be afraid that they're not going to message you or you message them and they, and it doesn't have, you know, because it will happen. And don't think that you're better than online dating. If anything has told us about this period in our time of life, no one is better than anyone. And online dating is the place to be. So if you, you're, um, you are doing a disservice to yourself. And even when we get back to a semblance of normal life, still have the online dating because it is another way to meet somebody and you never know who you're going to meet online. It could be the love of your life or it could be a great friend. You never know, but it's that, I think that's one of the, the myths. I think people 
took from like 20 years ago and it still sticks that only losers are online dating and that's not true. I've met some amazing, amazing people on online dating and some of them might, are still great friends of mine to this day. Yeah, and I think, I, I forget what article it was, but it was pointing out like how, and I, I think, you know, since my, my show is geared towards like creatives overall, I think mm-hmm. this put a nice bow on it. But like the idea that um, as we get busier in our lives, um, not that online dating expedites it, but it, it, it kind of, it, 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 let's say it focuses it a little bit, you know? Yep. Um, and I think, I think there isn't a benefit to that. And I think like, you know, as, as artists, like we all have our ambitions and things like that. Not that like, you know, having a partnership with somebody isn't like a priority, but yeah. you know, you'd rather put that time into the partnership versus the search aspect. Is that fair enough to say? Yes, that is fair enough to say because a partnership is important. We, as we, as humans want, you know, a companion, we, you know, we're all looking for love. What's, you know, am I saying is me, whether it's for 24 hours or a lifetime, but we're all looking for love. Like that is a universal thing. And online dating is just another tool to help you get there. And I like how you said it, it's cutting out that stuff. Cause if you're messaging with someone and it's not going anywhere, that means you didn't have to spend an hour or two in a restaurant, in a bar, going, I don't know why I'm here. You can normally tell by that time if you want to spend an hour or two with someone before you go out with them by talking to them online. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Well, thank you so much. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to plug all your stuff, uh, Next Connection um, and all that. So, you know, if, if, if someone's very curious and they're like, you know what, I've been online dating, hasn't been working for me, or maybe they haven't been online dating, but they're like, shit, I got to get on this. And they want oh yeah, I would love to help you, and I make it so easy for you and fun. So, because <laughs> that's just me. That's the one thing. You have fun with it. But um, you can. My website is uh, nxtconnection.com. On IG, you can fo- follow me at NXT Connection, and then on Facebook, um, my group, my Facebook group is Success with Online Dating. Awesome. So you can find me at all those things. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dorinda. Um, I'm sure I'm sure we'll have another follow-up in, in due time to share with people. And maybe maybe we'll even have a success story because of this show. Like, yeah, you know, no, like imagine, imagine, you know, I would that's that's my call to action. Like someone out there listening, get in touch <laughs> and be the success story because of this show. I would love nothing more. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So.